Hey guys, welcome back to another Dragonair Silent Gods video. Today's video was, unfortunately, it was meant to be a um, guide for all of the weekly bosses with one single team, but um, I stupidly forgot to hit record, did all the runs, and well, yeah, I can't redo them, so that will go out next week instead. Um, so instead today I'm going to show my Grave of Rot team. Um, so Grave of Rot is where you can collect the accuracy and spell haste gear, but also the stun set, which is incredibly valuable. So if we jump over, uh, jump over to there, I will have a little run through that for you, uh, show you the team that I use and talk about other ways that you'll be able to do that. Um, one thing that's important to note is with these Moonlight Dungeons events, it's likely that next week Grave of Rot is going to be the one that you're going to want to farm. So having a team in place ready for that is incredibly important to make sure you can pick up all of the um, Lunar Halo Shards from these events. So there's 15 available in each event, and obviously that ends in one day and 12 hours. It, like I say, it will likely be Grave of Rot after that, so on Sunday. So as I said, obviously I will show you my team that I'm using. My team does use some legendaries, so it's not necessarily accessible for everybody if we load in my gear here. So first of all, I'm using Garius. Garius is my tank. He's in the ally protection set to share the damage that everyone else is taking, so he takes 15% of the damage they would otherwise take and also gains 15% damage reduction on himself. Aside from that, he's built with a good amount of defense, some decent HP, and he's using the Scarab Amulet artifact. So he's, with his ultimate skill, going to be helping to help uh, keep my team alive. Um, in terms of healer and debuffer, or uh, debuff dispelling, I've got Acilia. So Acilia is built with a large amount of enlightenment, no accuracy. Um, she's actually unbooked, so her cooldown is 22.2 seconds rather than the ideal um, kind of 18 to 20 seconds, which you'd need on this boss normally. So she dispels all debuffs on all allies and grants some debuff immunity for 10 seconds. She then casts a spell to heal all allies every 0 0.5 seconds. So that's just going to help to deal with the a ma massive amount of debuffs you face on this boss and also keep uh, the team alive. So instead of a cilia, you could use... Other options like Jillian, you could use Vicuk, the Epic, you could even use the rare, um, is it Enna, I believe, the Lightning Rare. Uh, there's, there's lots of options for cleansing. Acilia is just the one I choose to use here because she dispels all of the debuffs and then gives debuff immunity. Uh, you could also use Catherine just for the debuff immunity if you time it correctly, uh, which I'll talk about in just a second. So next up, we've got my Vinyara. So my Vinyara is my my attack penalty hero so she's also dropping the turn meter slightly uh, which just means the rotation of the boss is slightly longer than the original 18 seconds so yeah obviously having attack penalty is really important to make sure you're not taking too much damage so if you don't use vinyara make sure you are using somebody who can provide that attack penalty for you in terms of damage dealers i use the two that i use almost everywhere so i've got shinna shinna is enabling my other damage dealer which is beldel um, so Ice Blast work perfectly as long as you've got one damage dealer and one enabler. The damage dealer could be somebody like Girthin, whereas the enabler could be somebody like Shinna. It could be Zorak, the legendary. It could be uh, Bledin, the epic. And they are all very good options. Obviously, uh, I did actually use Bledin myself until I pulled a Shinna. And last but not least is Beldel. So Beldel will be doing the majority of the damage here. She's built with around 6,000 attack, 100% crit rate, and then whatever crit damage I could get. She's in the Inventor set because it gives a huge damage boost. And obviously, like I said, this could be Girthin the Epic. With Girthin, you only need to build for 80% critical rate, so you can build a lot more um, other stats at the same time. So if we have a look at skill timings on this boss, I've only got it set up for two people. So um, in fact, no, it's only one person. So it's only set up for my Garius. My Garius is set just to go after my Acilia uses her cleanse. So this just means that I don't have heal reduction when I use his ultimate skill to heal everybody. Aside from that, Acilia is going to be using this on cooldown every time. In terms of the boss's skills, it has a... Um, Map-wide attack that inflicts heal prohibition and five stacks of poisons for 30 seconds. Uh, the second skill then inflicts recharging speed penalty. Obviously, you want to cleanse these off as soon as possible and prevent yourself from getting them where, wherever you can. Uh, on the ultimate skill, it devours the current target and chews them for four seconds, dealing poison damage each second and restores HP equal to 600% of the damage dealt. So you need somebody incredibly tanky to take this hit so that you can make sure that your boss, you're not taking too much damage 
and therefore restoring a huge amount of HP. Uh, one thing you can do here though is to use heal reduction yourself to prevent the boss from being able to heal. But just have yourself a very strong tank and you should be able to out damage the healing requirements. Um, as I say, other than that I don't have timing set on anybody. So my run is fairly quick, it's around a 40 second run. So if we jump in and we'll have a little look at how it plays out. So on top of the skills from the boss, it's, one, it's worth mentioning that every time you hit the boss, you have a chance to take a poison debuff as well. So um, as you'll see, I'm racking up a lot of poisons on my team. I've got seven stacks on Beldell, 12 on Shinna. Um, that's because Shinna's hitting so frequently with her skills. But once they're cleansed off, we should be able to keep them under control for the rest of the fight. As you can see there, that's where the boss is healing. It's 15,000 per tick. Um, but in terms of the damage, it's it's not an issue at all. We can just melt through the boss regardless. Uh, one thing that's important to note though is if you are using different damage dealers in this team, you will um, you won't kill this boss as fast. But the the kind of the way this boss works is as long as you're dealing with the debuffs and you can stay alive, it's just going to keep repeating. So as much as this team lasts forty two to forty seconds. If I used a different damage dealer, it would still work. It would just take longer instead. Uh, as long as you've got the cleansing, you've got the healing, you've got attack penalty, uh, you will be able to get through this fight. So I'll run that another time just to show it off again. And um, just so we can talk through the skill timings for the important heroes. So as you can see, obviously we're getting the debuffs in at the minute. Garius is ready with his ultimate, but he won't use his ultimate until after my... Acilia has cleansed, so if you watch Acilia here, so there we go, so she's going to cleanse everybody now and then Garius can heal. So that also gives me debuff immunity for 10 seconds, so any other debuffs that are coming in at the moment, so this is attack here, I won't, oh, it runs off just in time, sorry. And um, So then my Vinyara drops the turn meter, places decrease attack, and allows my team just to rotate their skills faster and obviously get them off before the boss takes another turn. Um, the boss does die around now, um, sometimes it does eat for a second time, there you go, but we can just kill it through that, that's not a problem at all. There we go, so as I say, the sets that you can get from this dungeon are the uh, Accuracy and Spell Haste set, which also heals the lowest HP ally by 15% of their max HP every time you cast an ultimate skill. So this can be really good to help keep your teams alive. The other set from this dungeon is the um, stun set. So stun set is so valuable in so many different areas, especially uh, a meander and pillar of trials. Towards the end, you will almost certainly need it just to keep enemies under control. And so let's forge a piece here, see if we can get a stun set so I can show you it. No, nope. so I'll have to look at it in my gear one second. I don't have a huge amount of it because I've not spent a lot of time farming Grave of Rot yet. So here we go, Holy Hunter. So as you can see here, accuracy and resistance and three piece effect is when the wearer deals damage to an enemy, there's a 20% chance of inflicting stun for three seconds. Derivative damage won't trigger this effect. So if you have somebody who hits frequently, whether it be AOE or single target, you have a lot of chances to place that three second stun. Realistically, last season I had my nearly my full pillar of trial and... Uh, Fame and the teams in this stun set because it just does make such a difference. I know it's only 20% chance, but as long as you're hitting frequently enough, you are going to land a lot of stuns and it's going to really make a difference to your runs. So that is my Grave of Rot team. Obviously, like I say, there are lots of alternatives you could use. Just to talk about the cleansers though, if you go to gallery and, and you go to filters, when you scroll down and get to special, you can go to buff to spelling. Um, no, sorry, not buff to spelling, debuff to spelling. So if we look here, you can see a huge list of heroes who do dispel debuffs. Um, as well as that though, you can look towards more options such as, um, where is it? Uh, debuff block. So debuff block would provide you with block debuffs effectively. Um, if you time that correctly, you can make sure you're mitigating the debuffs from the first and second skill. You will still be taking the poisons passively from hitting the boss. Um, but there are plenty of options to work around this, whether you use potentially an extra support if you don't feel that one's doing it for you. Last season I used um, a cleanser and I also used Adolphus to shield just to help keep my team healthy. Um, 
so realistically the, the damage race in this fight isn't too bad at all so you can get away with using two dps and an extra support um and then obviously your tank to take the eat or to take the devour um so yeah just have a little look at your roster it's all about finding those key mechanics that you can cover so making sure you've got somebody who can tank the boss and not take too much damage from devour making sure you're keeping on top of the debuffs You've got uh, attack penalty, and aside from that, it's just a case of dealing damage. You could probably kill this boss with a single damage dealer as long as you're following those core principles. So yeah, the only other thing from today's video is, as I said, this was meant to go in a different video today, um, but it happens, unfortunately. These mistakes are easy to make. It's the first time I've not hit record when recording a video, but uh, hopefully it will be the last. Um, but I do want to just do the draws for the giveaway that I announced the other day. And um, these, unfortunately, were not claimed from the previous uh, giveaway I did. So there's eight codes left to do. And um, I made a Discord server, which I will get around to kind of fleshing out a little bit and making a bit more exciting later today. So yeah, anybody who's reacted to the um, pen, uh, the announcement message in the Discord will be thrown into this. So I have recorded that separately. As I say, it was meant to go into the other video. So yeah, I'll jump over to that. So here we go. As for the January giveaway, like I said, unfortunately, only two of the 10 people reached out to claim their rewards. So I've got eight codes left to give, which do expire in a matter of days. So I'm going to spin this wheel and the first eight people who come out will be getting a code sent to them on Discord. Uh, obviously, to get involved in future giveaways, please do join my Discord, which will be in the pinned comment. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Hopefully I will have one in the next couple of days maybe a week or so and um, from last month's uh, content creator competition when that comes to a close so right let's see who's uh, gonna get a code this time so first up we've got angry orc so i'm going to make a note of that and remove him from the list the second code is going to go to Bad Penny. Remove Bad Penny from the list. The third code will go to Messy Magic. Fourth code going to we've got Kirk. So that's four of the eight done. Remove Kirk from the list. So next up we've got Pig Dog Hunter as the uh, fifth code, I believe. He's in track here. But yeah, that's five codes gone, three left to go. And there we go, that's code number six going to Grim Jow. Um, next up we've got so we've got seven codes. Uh, this is the seventh code now. So we've got one more to do after the next one. Um, so I'm just making sure Grim's on the list. There we go. Right, so code number seven. Is it going to be... That's close. Colts Freak. There we go. So let's put Colts Freak on the list. Remove from this list. And the last code of this month's giveaway, well, last month's giveaway, technically, goes to... And there we go. So the final winner is D Newman 8 So that is all for this round of giveaways. So what I'll do is I will tag everybody in the Discord as soon as I get the nude giveaway in. Um, we'll leave that running for a few days, maybe a week. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for everybody who entered and congratulations to all the winners. You will be receiving two Heliolite dice and an epic scroll. 
um, and some worm arrow as well. I will drop all of you a message on Discord in the next hour or so um, from when this video goes out. But uh, yeah, thank you very much.